If you have your Bibles, can you get them out so we can take a look together what the Bible has to say? Today I'd like to talk about devoted to Bible teaching objectively, not passively. And if you have your Bibles, let's go to Acts chapter 2, and we're going to verse 42. And Acts is the fifth book in your New Testament, so we're in the New Testament. We're going to Acts chapter 2, and we're in verse 42. And it says, And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Notice here, this is really the start of the church. And notice the first thing in verse 42 that they did, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's the teaching based on the Bible. And we can see that they were steadfastly continuing in that teaching. And that's something that believers should do today continue in the teachings of the Bible and what the apostles had taught. And the apostles wrote a lot of the New Testament books so we can find out more about Jesus through what the apostles have given us. And let's go over to our next verse in Acts chapter 17 verse 11. It's the same book but we're in chapter 17 verse 11 and it says, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica and that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scripture daily to find out whether these things were so. So we can see here that these people, when they receive the word with all readiness, and that's good even for today, we should be open to biblical truth, even if we've never heard it before. But look at the next step. These people, they search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. And that should be true today. When you hear a new teaching or something you're not sure of, you should search the scriptures or the Bible. The scriptures is the Bible. You should search the Bible to make sure that what you're hearing matches the Bible teaching and that is true. Truth is objective, so it doesn't change. So if you hear something today, be open to it, saying, well, maybe I should search the Bible to make sure this is true. If you already know it's false, then you should reject it. And if you search the Bible and you find out that it's not true, then you should reject it. But you should make sure that the scripture matches what you're hearing. And if it is true, and it's objectively true, and then we can accept it as biblical truth, and that's what we should do. But let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah is in the Old Testament, right in the middle area of your Bible. We have Jeremiah chapter 23, and we're going to verse 16, because we're going to see that false teachers and false prophets were active even back in the Old Testament times, and this is what we're going to take a look at. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16, it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesied to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, The Lord has said, You shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, No evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? Let's jump down to verse 21. It says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Verse 22, But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them away in their, from their evil way and from their evil doings. So we can see here in these verses that these prophets were giving out a false message. But notice verse 22, if they had listened to the Lord, then those people would have heard a correct message and been able to turn from their evil things that they were doing. Let's just look at a couple more verses. In verse 25, it says, I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Notice there's people out there that will say, I have a dream or I have a vision, and they'll give something, and it's lies. It's not based on the biblical truth. So we should always verify things like they did in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, with the Bible to make sure that's true. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 7 now. We're going to verse 15. Matthew's the first book in your New Testament. We're going over to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, and it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Well, taking a look at this, it says that there's false prophets who are going to come and try to deceive people. And then verse 16 says, you'll know them by your fruits. And we can tell that an orange tree will grow oranges and so on. And that's what it's saying here. And then notice verse 20, therefore by your, their fruits you will know them. Now some people say this is good works that people do, that believers will do good works and therefore we can know they're believers. Well, there's non-believers that do good works. And that's not necessarily a telltale sign that that person is a believer or not. 
So how can we know that a person's a believer or not based on their words? What's the message they bring to you? Are they saying that by faith in Jesus as your Savior, you can receive everlasting life and you can never lose it? If they're doing that, then they're a good tree. They have good fruit because they're giving out a message that will save people spiritually. And if they have a different message, then we can know that they're producing bad fruit, that they're not a good tree. And we can see this based on the context in Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. It makes the connections to the message that people bring. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. It says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Bro of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Notice it's the message that's being brought out is whether it's a good tree or a bad tree. And continue on in verse 35. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So when a person faces Jesus for judgment, their words is what's going to clear them or not clear them. And we're going to see that the words is what makes a person have good fruit or not. And what's the main message? Well, John chapter 6, verse 47 is a very clear message of how to be spiritually saved. Let's take a look at it. John's in your New Testament, the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 47. And Jesus makes a wonderful promise here. He says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Now, this means that if you believe in Jesus as your Savior, you receive the gift of everlasting life. And that means you're spiritually saved. And once you have everlasting life, you can never lose it. And that's the good news of the Bible. So if somebody comes along and, t and gives a gospel message that aligns with this message, then you know that they're producing good fruit and that they're a real believer. And if somebody comes along and gives a different message, even if they say, I'm a believer or I'm a Christian, you can know based on the words that they're giving you, that the message they're bringing you, they're not really a good tree. They're not producing good fruit. Now, they might have believed in Jesus with the real gospel message a long time ago and twisted their, their teaching or got confused and started teaching badly. So we don't know that they had never received everlasting life, but the message that they're bringing to you now is not the true message and that they're producing bad fruit. Well, let's continue on in our study, and we're going to 2 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to verse 14. 2 Peter is all the way towards the back of your Bible. We're going to 2 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to look starting in verse 14. And in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, it says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Notice this that some people were even back in Peter's time, at the time of Jesus, people were twisting the scripture to fit their own, for their, fit their own thinking. And it's really destroy, destroying them and the people that listen to them. And in verse 17, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away from with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Notice this in verse 17, Peter is encouraging the people he's writing to, which are believers, to continue steadfastly, meaning stay in the Bible, stay with the objective truth, and don't do it passively. Make sure that the message is true based on the Bible, because you don't want to be led away with the error of the wicked, and you want to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. And let's go to our next place, and we're going to go to 2 Timothy Second Timothy is just a little bit before this area. So going back to Second Timothy, we're going to chapter 3, verse 16. We're going to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to verse 16. This is all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So if you want to be complete as a believer, you really should know and study the whole Bible, because that's what verse 16 is saying. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So the Bible was given to us, and look at the things it will do for you. It's good for doctrine, that means teaching, 
for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. So to please God, we really should know the Bible and study it and put it to use. And let's take a look at chapter 2, verse 15. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of truth is the Bible. And if you want to be approved to God, you need to be diligent. That means you're trying your best to be to present yourself approved to God. And a worker who does not need to be ashamed because he is rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to make sure who is the Bible written to? Is it talking to believers, to non-believers? And apply it in the appropriate way. That's what it means by divide the word of truth correctly. That we are applying it to the right person at the right time. Not the whole Bible is written to only believers or only non-believers. It depends on what we're reading, and we need to take the time to try to understand the Bible correctly and not just passively read the Bible. We should be looking for objective truths found in the Bible. Well, let's go over to one more place, and we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 10. And we're in 1 Corinthians, which is a little bit before this area, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to verse 10. And let's take a look at this. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Well, taking a look at this, these verses right now, basically every person has the spirit of man, but the spirit of God is given to believers. Every person that has believed in Jesus as Savior has the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit helps you understand the words of the Bible. And let's look at verse 13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So if you're trying to study the Bible, the Holy Spirit, if you're a believer, if you're studying the Bible, the Holy Spirit will use those words to help you grow and help transform your mind to, to understand the Bible and to be able to apply it to your life correctly. But we need to take the time to objectively look for truth, apply it to our lives, and try to understand it the best to our ability. And for those that have not believed in Jesus as Savior yet, then that's a natural man. That's what verse 14 is talking about. But that person can still understand the gospel message that Jesus has paid for every person's sin. And if you simply believe in him as Savior, you can receive the gift of everlasting life. So if you have never believed in Jesus as your Savior, you should do so, so you can receive everlasting life, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to help you understand the Bible better and better. If you have already believed in Jesus as your Savior, then go out and share this message so other people can know this great message, and then take the time to say the Bible well, so that you are well-pleasing to the Lord. Well, thank you for joining me for this Bible study. Join me for my next one, and I'll see you then. Thank you.